So a little bit about me. I am a um, clinical associate with Pink Therapy. I am uh, also an integrative counsellor um, and psychosexual therapist. I uh, teach on the psychosexual therapy diploma for the Centre um, for Psychosexual Health. And um, I would like to talk briefly about AVEN, which is the Asexuality, Visibility and Education Network which is an American online asexual community founded in 2001. And um, they're kind of the, um, the Bible of everything uh, asexual. They have a lot of discussion forums, they have a lot of uh, clinical papers, a lot of discussion. Um, and they give the following definition to asexuality. An asexual is someone who does not experience sexual attraction. Unlike celibacy, which people choose, Asexuality is an intrinsic part of who we are. There is considerable diversity among the asexual community. Each asexual person experiences things like relationship, attraction and arousal somewhat differently. Asexuality is distinct from celibacy or sexual abstinence, which are behaviours, while asexuality is generally considered to be a sexual orientation. Nonetheless, some asexuals do participate in sex for a variety of reasons. Some do experience arousal and masturbate, but these are detached from sexual feelings. Asexuality is not a new phenomenon. Um, famous asexual people include Joan of Arc, Frédéric Chopin, Isaac Newton, allegedly. And it has been estimated in a, a survey uh, done in 2004, I believe, that 1% of the population is asexual. Uh, that's a lot of people, uh, but it's also probably an underestimation. Um, the asexual population is not vocal. Um, it's not very visible beyond their internet presence and the odd articles in the press and the media. And many asexuals won't be aware of this identity, so they can't come forward and say they are asexual and add their voice to the community. So asexuality is a new field which deserves more research and studies. I think there's a lot of things that could be uh, studied around asexuality, like fluidity within asexual experiences, but also intersectionality with other identities. And we're going to be touching a bit on that. In 2009, as Dominique um, uh, told you earlier on, I conducted an uh, accidental research uh, on asexuality and I gathered data from over 300 self-identified asexuals. It was a pure accident. Um, and people just opened up their heart to me and gave me a lot of very, very important data. Um, a real insight into asexual experiences. I would just like to say that uh, in the respondents, there was no one identifying as trans or as queer, so it's going to be a bit binary. But this is what we have to work with at the moment. However asexuals uh, conceive the idea of attraction, whether it is aesthetic attraction, whether it's romantic attraction, um, sexual, sensual, intellectual attraction, maybe spiritual, the majority of asexuals are attracted to others. Um, in my uh, research, I've discovered that whilst men seem to be attracted in equal part to the same gender, to opposite gender, to both or to none, for women, it seem to be, they seem to be more attracted to either the opposite gender or to no one. So at this point, we can already identify different identities within asexuality. The first one is aromantic, which is a person who has little or no romantic attraction whatsoever. We might identify the homo asexual or the bi asexual or possibly the homo romantic, bi romantic and pan romantic. <coughs> Other results from my research show that 41% of the female and 47% of the male respondents are in a relationship. So asexuals are not lonely persons per definition. The majority of these uh, relationship, that is 60% of them, are asexual, which means that the remaining 40% of these relationship have a sexual partner. 
and 85% of those relationships are open. The sexual partner may have sex with strangers in saunas, for instance, um, or they've reported they have a, a special arrangement with a special friend. But also I've discovered something very interesting, that sometimes the lover of the sexual partner would live in-house. They would be the lodger or they would be the tenant. And this secrecy would be kept away from other um, people. So this brings interesting questions around sexual jealousy. What does that mean in an asexual context? And we may want to look at the dynamics of polyamorous and non-monogamous relationships within asexual couples where one partner is sexually active. There are other um, asexual identities we could include. We have here asexual or ace, which is the main definition. Aromantic, we've seen who are people who do not experience any romantic attraction. Homo asexual, bi asexual. Homo romantic, bi romantic, pan romantic. Gray A, or gray asexual, or gray sexual. Someone who identifies within the area between asexuality and sexuality. For example, because they experience sexual attra attraction very rarely, only under specific circumstances, or of an intensity so low that it's ignorable. Then we have demisexual, someone who can only experience sexual attraction after an emotional bond has been formed. And this bond does not have to be romantic in nature. We have the monogamy, the polyamory, and the non-monogamous configurations. And also something that probably needs a bit more uh, research is the kink identity within asexual communities. Um, I first came across this identity in the excellent documentary by Angela Tucker, uh, Asexuality, where a very attractive young man explained that he was kink, but asexual. That brings the idea that kink might not be about sex. So when we consider the asexual landscape and the breadth of diversity within orientation, desire, attraction, arousal, sexual activity or sexual interest, and lifestyle, we may want to reconsider the notion of asexuality. And I would like to posit the idea of asexuality's plural. Belonging to a spectrum of sexualities and including the possibility of fluidity. So of course there's a lot of conceptualizing, theorizing and philosophizing around um, asexualities. How are we gonna understand asexualities and work with our clients? So how do we understand asexualities? First of all, asexuality is not chastity. <coughs> It's not celibacy, these are behaviors, these are choices. It's not frigidity, it's not a disorder, it's not a pathology. Asexuals do not report any kind of hormonal or physiological anomaly. It's not illegal. Though asexuality can be ground for divorce or annulment of marriage. It's not immoral, nor a sin, though religion may have views around asexuality being in the way of procreation. And it's not a psychopathology, as psychopathologies are experienced with marked distress or interpersonal difficulties. What I would like to offer is that asexuality is in fact a self-definition, it's not a diagnosis. It's a self-definition of a sexual orientation. As previously mentioned, a pathology or dysfunction is experienced with marked distress or interpersonal difficulties. Now, external oppressions and the social context in which asexuals might be living can cause marked distress. And this is probably the point we should focus on. So let's consider how some theoretical approach to therapy may help us conceptualize asexuality in a supportive and affirmative way. If we take a psychodynamic approach, we may want to consider that the sexual energy, the life force or the eros as opposed to the 
thanatos, as Freud uh, talked about, is in all of us. We do have this energy, whether we are sexual or asexual. What we do with it will differ from individual to individual. I would like to offer the idea that this energy may well be displaced or channeled. And examples of channeled energy may be seen in very creative and productive artists who will not have a sexual life, but be extremely creative and extremely successful. Successful ach achievers, thinkers, people involved in spirituality. An example of displaced sexual energy may take place in couples after they gave birth, or adopting a child, or maybe having a pet. <coughs> All of a sudden, sex is not on the cards. It's not a priority anymore. So I want to talk a bit about the four loves as described by C.S. Lewis. The eros, which is the romance. <coughs> the agape, the unconditional love, the spiritual love. Philia, which is the brotherly love and friendship, and the storge, which is the affection found in family bonds. Reasons for not being interested in sex could be seen as adaptive rather than maladaptive. We may have some very strong um, intimate connections with people without involving sex, like with our family, like with our friends, with animals, and these are absolutely normal and they're not pathologized. Finally, on the psychodynamic approach, I would like to say that it would be wrong to assume that asexuality results from attachment issues, but we may, may, we may consider that asexuality may contribute to attachment and relational difficulties, and we'll see that a little bit later on. Another way of understanding um, asexuality might be to take a psychosexual approach where we will be taking the history of the client, sexual or asexual history. We might want to consider if the asexuality is primary, as in it's always been there, or secondary, if it results from an episode in their life. If it is total, happens all the time and constant, or if it is situational, may happen in certain cases. That would be the case for grey asexuals and demisexuals. Importantly, we might want to ask them to look at their beliefs and values around what is erotic, what constitutes fantasies, what constitutes sensuality, love, intimacy. What are the components of their asexuality? And then we would like to consider the social context they live in, and of course their relationships. If they do have sex, is it consensual? And are they free to say, I don't want to have sex? Finally, the humanistic approach. The first point I think would be relevant to all work we do, sexual, sexual work we do with clients. Did I come that wrong? Maybe not. Um, I think it's hugely important that we understand our own sexuality and its components, and it's not things that we are trained in at university level. Thank God for pink therapy. Um, we might want to look at our relationship values, what we consider ourselves intimate relationships, our sexual activity, our levels of desire, of arousal, of attraction and love, and being secured in our understanding of our own sexuality before working with asexuals. We might want to consider a holistic approach. We're going to look at the whole picture rather than focusing on the distress caused by sexuality. We might need to have a strong empathic attunement, or rather a Burns, Eric Burns Martian approach. We don't know anything about asexuality. Tell us all. What I think is really important is the individual narratives, regardless of the theories we want to approach. Let's listen to our clients. So what do asexuals want us to know? With these 300 questionnaires that I received filled by asexuals, um, a number of difficulties and, and very challenging issues were brought by them. 
the first one would be the invisibility of the sexual orientation. Um, asexuality is not discussed, it's not acknowledged by media, society or professionals. But also asexuals find it safer to keep their asexuality secret, keeps them safe. So they may hide behind a relationship, they may hide behind their work, their faith, their age, Another main problem for asexuals is the lack of physical community. The asexual community is virtual. It's online. There's very little um, physical meetups. This results in isolation, a physical isolation, but also an emotional isolation. There's problems with vocabulary. Not everyone has the words to express what their asexuality is about. There's relationship values and partners viewing things differently that may come to the equation. Sexual identity. How does a gay man prove he is gay if he doesn't have sex with other gay men or with other men? How cultures and faith impact with asexuality. The difficulties of a society's sexual agenda on asexual. We are highly hypersexed. An asexual may not be able to identify or recognize sexual messages. There's many cases of rape that have been reported. There's problems with relationships. Where do you find a partner when you're asexual? <laughs> OK Cupid uh, seems to be the only website, as far as I know, that has an asexual identity option. Once you find a potential partner or a partner, how do you negotiate sex? How do you have children? What are your options if you don't want to have sex? Is any sexuality more acceptable? Is there a hierarchy of sexualities? Another big problem, there is no interest from the caring profession or no understanding. In fact, asexuality generates curiosity. And asexuals experience a lack of respect and support they experience oppression, abuse, and discrimination. They receive messages that our hypersexual societies send, such as asexuality is not normal, couples need sex, and something is wrong, so let's fix it. So briefly, I'm going to give you some of the voices that I've heard from these questionnaires. People have been saying things like, I'm very normal. Asexuality is a morbid fascination for non-asexuals. Non Please publish a paper that says I'm not mentally ill. I beg of you. A touch is electrical and can be very erotic. I don't like being touched, but I would like to meet. How do you say you find sex revolting to people? I can't be the only one. How do you tell a woman you want a sexless relationship? I don't want to go to therapy. I'm very lonely and would love a partner. I've been called a freak and I've been thrown out of gay bars. I'm very disappointed that I will always be alone and that I've let my family down. I've been rejected from the gay community. It's not very open-minded and seems very sex orientated. I'm not sure if I hate my partner for having sex or needing sex or if I hate myself for not being able to fulfill his needs. I was called names, and men tried to force themselves on me, saying all I needed was a good fuck. I was beaten up by boyfriends for not sleeping with them. My asexuality was stated by my wife as grounds for divorce. I was sent to the hospital 45 years ago to see a psychiatrist and had ECT in an attempt to cure me. My parents made me have all sorts of tests when I came out asexual. They thought it could be cured by hormone or therapy. Can you imagine how that makes me feel, that even my family can't accept my sexuality? They often said that they wish I was gay, because at least that is normal. The psychologists say it is OK to be asexual, but it's hard, because people don't understand it and think you have problems in your mind or with your penis. Being asexual has allowed me to pursue a career without distraction. And maybe the last one, because I'm slightly running out of time. People think something must have happened, sex to be 
the reference these days. Hope you enjoy it. Thank you for your attention. Thank you.